Okay, I'm going to show you something I've just finished making recently, which is um, called an infinite zoom. And I was trying to do outpainting, but outpainting is, Comfy UI is mostly terrible. Um, it's really hard to control. The, the way that it does in painting is generally not conducive to in painting like much. Like it'll work, but it's not. Anyway, I, d I digress. Uh, out painting is, is a pain in my ass and uh, giving me headaches. So uh, instead, I am going to do infinite zoom. I thought to myself, how do I do that? So the trick is you'll first need to generate an image. So if we generate an image, oh, whoops, put this at 100. Okay, so if we generate a image we now have our base image for what we're going to do and because uh, we want to basically create an infinite zoom where we zoom into space we are going to do some stuff we need to do a uh, it would be transform no. you could do any kind of um, not resource yeah I need a Use any kind of crop um, that you like, as long as it gives you the ability to control where each corner of the image are at. And uh, I'm going to use Image Transform Crop Absolute from the LOL plugin. You can see if you want to know what any of these things are for, it's in the green, the green text thing up here. Now I'm going to run this image through the crop. And then I'm going to go, okay, how do we go in on an image? And that's when we decrease the kind of edges of the thing. And you could do a scale and then it would just shrink the thing in the middle and it pointless. What you need to do is you need to use a crop. So the crop, I'm just going to go with 10 pixels because there's no reason to go any more than that. So in order to do that, we have to add 10 to the top and bottom because zero means it's at the top and as far left as it can go on these two uh, sections and if you want it to go beyond the bounds of your original one you need to be um, you need to reduce these in order to make sure that it crops in on all sides so we need it to be five zero two And this will mean it'll go in by 10 each time. Now, that's not good enough. We need to make it so that this will then remain the same size for our next sampler. So we're going to do an upscale. It's really frustrating. The image upscale for Comfy UI, the default upscale image, is not on the right click menu. I, sorry, I'm not on the search menu I have no idea why it is really annoying okay so we do this we do this and now it's going back up to the original size but minus those 10 pixels so we are now currently zooming in now if I run a preview image I'll just may a little show you that in action now if you look top here where there's the star you'll see it's zoomed in slightly compared to that one and oh this one too with the better quality as you can see it is actually zooming in on all so this tells us this is going in and what we need to do next is we need to feed this into a key sampler and the reason we do that is as we go in it'll increase in the pixel sizes will increase as you upscale it very slowly obviously but with that there's a loss of detail and in order to add that detail back in we have to run it through a k sampler but at a very small like amount that it doesn't um massively change the details from frame to frame in the process so we reduce this to say 1.5 or under i wouldn't go above 2 like 0 0.2 I wouldn't go above that um, probably too much for this depends what you're doing obviously 
And obviously you could zoom this in on any part of the image. You could offset it so that it goes diagonally. Um, you just have to change how much you're cropping in on each side, essentially. Okay. So now it's coming in, it's getting cropped in the middle, getting resized, coming out through the case sampler. But it's just going to do a different image every time. So how do we change that? Well, there's an amazing node by Impact Pack, um, which I love. And um, it's currently a little bit buggy, but uh, sounds like they're in the process of fixing it so that it works a bit better. But currently it works. So we need a send, image sender. So what the image send does is, uh, it will send to any other image receiver node because there's a different one called the image receiver. I can't spell receiver to save my life. Image receiver. So it will send to anyone that is the same link ID number, which means if I put this one here and then it will send to everything with a zero in it anywhere else in the thing. And this removes the problems you have with plugging an image from here up to the start of your um your node your workflow uh, which would cause errors and this stops you from having errors from doing that so we're sending an image from here to here and we are sending this back over here and we're going to remove this because actually i'm going to do one thing first i am going to copy and i'm going to add an image load image Uh, load image things can be used as containers for copy paste these things good way of storing images while you're doing other stuff and they'll stay until you close the browser which is cool but if you accidentally close it and you wanted it it goes away so remember to save them <laughs> if you want them okay so we've got this it is now producing an image we need a encoder a encoder and we no longer need this. We'll plug in the VA over here. Plug in this image. And we're plugging in this just to get it going. It's kind of like when you turn the ignition on a, on a car. You have to do this before you can the engine will start running. So the first step is always you need to start with a solid image. It'll populate this and then you can plug this, this into the rest of it. Now to talk about the bug with this. If I press Q to prompt, it will work fine the first time. Um, let's just put that down. First sampler needs to be a lot lower as well. Once you get, once you've got the initial image, you need to turn this one to low again. Okay, so now that's done. Uh, right. So uh, the problem with this is when it sends the image back to here. If you have stuff queued, like multiple stuff queued, uh, currently it's bugged and this isn't working properly. Um, they're working on a fix for it, apparently. Or something that'll make it, they'll change it maybe to make it work better. But currently the workaround is actually really cool. Um, I didn't realize a little tick box here before when I first um, was messing around with this stuff and there's no easy way to zoom in on this. And I do it this way barely barely functional interface at this level of zooming this thing up here is uh, automatically Q prompt when the Q hits zero and what that means oh, I can read everything again the curse of having a giant screen give me the thing give me the give, stop, stop selecting text in the wrong places I hate that okay um, so if you tick that little box there, it will keep generating images over and over and over and over again, infinitely. It'll just keep going. And because we've set this up and it's run through one, one pass and it's sent an image to our receiver, we can now bypass this. And every time we run, the changed image will populate here as long as we have this box ticked. Box ticked. Box ticked. <laughs> if, um... If this isn't ticked and you just click add a whole bunch here, it's not going to work. Uh, 
it'll just keep regenerating the same image. So you need to tick this box. And then when you click run, it should, we go click, it should just start generating images and it will not stop. Um, so you should see these images kind of, they'll slowly animate as they run through them. This is the start of our infinite zoom. Um, there are some problems associated with it, which is that as you generate them, they tend to get lighter and lighter and lighter. And this is just how stable diffusion makes images, um, which means you have to put in systems to fight the corruption of the image <laughs> into being too bright. Um, I've been using uh, just a solid uh, black color, which I use an image blend on. Um, but it's not perfect, obviously, and you really need to have a timed kind of, um, you know, uh, 100 steps and then put in some black and then roll it back and then and so on to kind of tune the whole thing because you can't really, there's no perfect balance between everything. But as you can see, it's just generating an animated one where it's zooming in and then it's adding detail every time. Currently, it's not adding enough detail, I don't think. Hard to say. So I uh, might add this up a little bit. Yeah, just adding a little bit more denoise um, might help it out, but it will change the image more each image. I'll show you a preview of what I've done previously. So this is uh, one which I prepared earlier. As you can see, it uh, where it gets darker is where I've tuned it so that it's come back into a decent spot. But uh, yeah, so you can create an infinite zoom thing with this. All you really need is a number plate at the other end. <laughs> at the other end, so it zooms in on a planet, and then you get a number plate, right? Um, all CSI type stuff. Enhance. Now, I mean, that was part of the original impetus for making this, but I'm not going to do it. I'll leave that to you. Um, there is a slight problem with stars. If you're doing this, um, they will form a grid. Unless you are darkening the image a fair bit with each step. Um, yeah, it, it, there's, 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 there's issues with it. Um, so I'm going to try and solve one of those issues right now. I'm going to add a mm, noise. Add a generate noise image. And Gaussian noise is kind of like multicolored noise. And um, it should do part of the job. Uh, blend. Image blend. Image blends can be used as switches for anyone who's not aware of that. You put it to one or zero, it will switch the output between one or the other input. Like the poor man switch. We run this on two and this on one. Over right here. I want to do the change in this segment here. And now it is running through the blend and it's going to get suddenly really dark. Or really noised out. There we go, noised out. Way too noised out. So if we drop this back, I think that's the direction I want to go. I'm not 100% sure. Yep. No. Okay, so now it is too bright, um, but it is generating stuff properly now. This will gradually turn into kind of space, I guess. Whoop, there we go, yeah. Yeah, too much. So one isn't is too much. One is the second image. Okay, I uh, need solid color, so color. I need a color, 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 color. I want a color. Solid color from Bextra. Bextra's got some good nodes, by the way. Uh, check them out. Solid color, um, noise, all kinds of stuff. Very useful. Okay, let's make it black. Remove the, uh, I'm removing the alpha here 
I removed a zero from the end and removed the A from here. And I'm also going to change the color mode to RGB because uh, if you run this as it is set up by default, it will give you errors. So bear that in mind. And I'm going to run another blend. And wrong one. That'll be it with the E on the end. I don't know why it's going way off the edges of the screen. Okay. This one, and then this one, and then zero is more of the original. So, yeah. Yes. Preview. This whole time is generating <laughs> more and more of the same images, by the way. Um, so, the thing about this is if you actually want it to make, um, you want the output to be something um, specific, you want to create an animation. In order to do that, you need to make sure that you're actually saving these images out, and that's pretty easy. Uh, you can save them with the regular save thing into your output folder, or as I like to do, use West Nodes Image Save. Save, which is lets you set where you're going to save the thing, and I'm going to save these to the same folder as before. Let me select it all. Copy and paste. Okay, now it should save, and then we go here. And at the end of every pass, it's going to now save an image into the same folder. And if there are numbered images, it will add one on the end, and it'll just keep saving at the end of the list. So this is going to go where those other ones were. And as you can see, it's just adding onto the end each time. So, as you can see, we're well and truly in a dust cloud now. So, uh, can we change? We need to make this darker. I want the noise because it emulates film grain. If you use this and then you run it through a sampler, it will look kind of grainy. And if we uh, set this up, it's just dark enough with a little bit of noise. Yeah, maybe more, maybe more. 50. Come on, come on. Uh, yeah, that's more like it. And uh, if we now blend it even more in. Might set these up properly, actually. This is it after I've uh, added my noise type thing to it. And then in the next one, you'll see it changes a little bit and so on. But it's not doing what I want because I'm sending the wrong thing through. So this one needs to be here. And it's probably going to be too dark now, but we'll see. Okay, so it should get a little bit darker each time it runs through now. And so this is you see that I'm kind of tuning it as I go. And that's the cool thing about having that tick box done. You could change prompts, you can do all this stuff and it'll just keep running through images in the background while you mess with the workflow. Um, anyway, hopefully this has um, helped you build your own thing. I'm going to include a copy of this workflow with the um, tutorial, I guess show off in thing um yeah um if you have any questions ask away um i'm probably gonna post this on reddit with this thing animated at some point <laughs> okay anyway um oh yeah i do other tutorial videos watch them if you like thanks for watching